Hello and welcome to the video tutorial series by Learn with Simulations. In this module, we will teach you some of the classes of Excel functions. We will cover the Excel financial functions in this video. The Excel financial functions are provided to perform many of the commonly used financial calculations such as the calculation of yield, interest rates, investment valuations, internal rate of return, payments and asset depreciation. We are going to cover the following categories. Payment functions like PMT, IPMT, PPMT, etc. Investment value functions like NPV, PV, FV, etc. Internal rate of return functions like IRR, XIRR, etc. Starting with the payment functions. The Excel PMT function calculates the constant periodic payment or installment required to pay off or partially pay off a loan or investment with a constant interest rate over a specified period. Let's look at the syntax. It takes argument as rate, which is the constant interest rate per period, NPR, the number of periods over which the loan is to be paid, PV, the present value of the loan slash investment, FV, the optional future value of the loan slash investment at the end of NPR payments, the default value is zero, which represents the loan completely paid. And finally, the type which can have values zero or one for payment made at the end or beginning of the month. Let's look at an example. We want to calculate the monthly payments on the loan of Rs 50,000 to be paid off in full over 5 years with an interest rate of 5% per year. Note that in the function, the interest rate is changed to per month interest rate. Also, the return payments are negative values as these represent outgoing payments for an individual. The next function is IPMT which calculates the interest payment during a specified period of a loan or investment in the same context of the constant periodic payments and constant interest rate. It has same arguments as PMT with an extra input of period for which the interest needs to be calculated. As can be seen in the example, the function is used to calculate the interest for the first, second and fifth period of the payment schedule. Note that the interest component slowly decreases over the periods. The next is the Excel ISPMT function which calculates the interest paid during a specified period of a loan or investment. The difference between ISPMT and IPMT is that IMPMT calculates by making equal payments inclusive of both interest and principal in each period, while ISPMT calculates by making equal principal payments at the start of each period and paying the interest on the outstanding balance at the end of each period. Note the difference in the interest paid with the two functions. You can also calculate the cumulative interest paid on the loan or investment between two specified periods in the same context of constant periodic payments and constant interest rate using the cum IPMT function. It has extra arguments of start period and end period representing the range for which the cumulative interest needs to be calculated. As can be seen in the example, the cumulative interest for each year representing 12 periods has been calculated. Similar to IPMT function which calculates the interest, we have the PPMT function which calculates the payment on the principal during a specified period of a loan or investment that is paid in constant periodic payments with a constant interest rate. It, is similar, it has similar syntax as IPMT and the example finds the payment on principal for first, second and fifth period of the payment schedule. And similar to QM IPMT function which calculates the cumulative interest, we have QM PRINK function which calculates the cumulative payment on the principal of a loan slash investment between specified period. It has similar syntax as QM IPMT and the example finds cumulative payment on principal for each year representing 12 e periods. The next set of functions is the investment value functions starting with NPV function which calculates the net present value of an investment based on supply discount rate and a series of future payments and incomes. Let's look at an example. In this, the initial investment of rupees 10,000 is made at the start of the first period while there are returns in each of the five periods. Note that this initial investment is not included in the argument to the NPV function. Instead, it is added on afterward. The next is the PV function, which finds the present value of an investment based on a series of equal future payments 
or a future payment at the end of the period. Note that the syntax is, uh, which contains PMT that is payment per period and FE the future value of the annuity at the end of periodic payments. The first example finds the present value for equal monthly payments while the second example finds it for payment done at the end of the period. But what if the payments are not made uniformly across the periods as was in the previous cases? Fortunately, Excel has XNPV function which takes the array of payment values and an array of corresponding dates of payment to, to give you the net present value. Look at the example for more details. Note that the first date should be the starting date and all other dates must be after this date to avoid num error. Now let's shift our focus to compounding to find future values of the with the FP function. It is quite similar to the PV function just that instead of finding the present value it finds the future value of an investment with periodic cost of payment and a constant interest rate. There might be cases in which the interest rate charge might change over a period of the investment. To cater to this requirement Excel provides a function FE schedule which calculates the future value of investment with a variable interest rate. It takes principal and the range containing the period wise interest rates to provide you the future value at the end of the period as can be seen in the example. Let's move to the internal rate of return functions namely IRR, MIRR, XIRR. The Excel IRR function returns the internal rate of return for a supplied series of periodic cash flows that is a set of values which includes an initial investment value and a series of net income values. One can also provide the optional guess at what you think the IRR might be to reduce the calculations that might be required to do by the Excel. The IRR function assumes that the returns in different periods are reinvested back in the company at the same rate, which may not be true. Hence, Excel has another function called MIRR uh, representing modified IRR, which states which takes additional argument of finance rate and reinvest at rate for the, the interest rate paid for the money used in the cash flow and the, that paid on the reinvested cash flows. Note that the example calculates the IRR at a reinvestment rate of 5%. The Excel XIRR function returns the internal rate of return for a supplied series of cash flows which are not necessarily periodic. It takes the array of investment slash income values and an array of corresponding dates to give you the IRR. See the example to understand this better. Now let's try to build up a simple finance worksheet. We will try to build the profit and loss statement here. This is the information provided to us like unit sales, price per unit, various direct and indirect costs interests and taxes. We have put up various heads of PL statement in Excel to save time. Try and calculate each of them to build the complete PL. Sales are total units multiplied by price per, un per unit. Cost of goods sold will be labor cost plus material cost plus utilities cost. Gross profit will be sales minus COGS and gross margin will be gross profits percentage of sales which is healthy 55% here. For operating expenses we will consider selling and admin cost and then calculate EBITDA and EBITDA. Then profit before tax after subtracting the interest. Calculate profit after tax after subtracting the income tax. Finally, PAT margin is calculated on sales and we get our simple PL statement. More forecasting and analysis can be done on with this excel that's it in this video we'll continue our excel video tutorial series in the next video thanks for watching you may visit our website www.learnbizsimulations.com to check out some of our business simulation games for learning and assessment